I'm so excited you're here because I'm going to be showing you guys how I took this tiny little noodle board or stove cover, whatever you would like to call it, and recreated a brand new one to fit my new stove. So my sweet husband actually took this project on himself and he didn't realize that I wanted to film it for YouTube and I was like, honey, what are you talking about? That's my job. <laughs> but anyway, I did catch him at the last second putting on the frame. Now you don't have to do this. You can always just get like a two by four and put them on either side. But with my last stove cover, I really liked the frame around it. So my husband got this sheet of plywood from Home Depot. I believe he said it was about 15 bucks. It was already sanded, ready to go. And then he also bought the trim, cut those down to size, added some liquid nails, and then clamped them on to each side. Next, once the liquid nails was completely dry and I knew that the frame was not going anywhere, our clamps are super cheap. We actually talked about getting new ones doing this project, but the clamps that I had on there were not as strong as we needed them to be. So when they dried, the side pieces or I should say the frame did end up moving a little bit which was no big deal I just took my lightweight spackling from Dollar Tree I filled in those spots and then once that was completely dry I took my finger sander and I also sanded that down smooth to make sure that all of the frame pieces were even Next, I'm going to take my Dixie Belle Voodoo Stain and I'm just going to stain this entire piece. Now, originally I started with this brush that I get from Walmart and it did completely fine. I ended up finishing um, the end or I should say the frame with this brush. But you're going to see here in a minute that I actually used a chalk paint brush and it worked so beautifully but because this piece is so large I did do it in sections and then wiped off the excess stain with a paper towel. So this is the part that I got a little bit smarter and I was like, okay, I need a different brush. Like the smaller brush worked, but this one just worked so much better. It spread the stain across this board like butter. And so I also went ahead and did a second coat of stain as well, because as you can see here, my husband is so cute. You guys, if you see that gorgeous design in the wood, he specifically, he's the one who got the materials to do this this project for us and he picked this piece of wood because of the design in the board and it just looked so gorgeous but I felt like the stain was a little patchy and I wanted it to be completely even so I did do a second coat. Next, I'm going to take my large chip brush from Home Depot with some white Waverly chalk paint and I'm just going to start by dry brushing the frame around our noodle board or stove cover, whatever you like to call it. And then I dry brushed in the like inside of the project, but y'all, I'm not going to lie. I'm really, really upset with myself that I did this. I wish I would have just left the dry brushing to the edges. I feel like the dry brushing just kind of looks like it shouldn't be there. I don't know. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think. Would you have dry brushed it or would you have left it plain? Um, but like I said, I really wish that I wouldn't have done this. So once I was done, I dried it really well with my blow dryer and then I took my zip sander and I just kind of lightened those lines and then I went back in with my large chalk paintbrush and I just went over the white to kind of tone it down a little bit because like I said I was really upset that I messed up like the design in the wood um, but you live and you learn right. <music> 
So once I was completely finished dry brushing, then I went in with my historic downtown farmer's market transfer. My entire house is farmhouse, as most of you guys know. So I thought that this was absolutely perfect to go on the middle of my stove cover. So once I lay down my transfer, and this is a pretty large transfer, this is a D size transfer. So it is 18 by 18 and they are a little bit more tricky to work with if you've never worked with a larger transfer. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to lay it down with the transfer facing down and you're going to want to pull the backing sheet away from the transfer rather than pulling the transfer away from the backing sheet. It's just going to help you so that way your transfer does not stick to itself. And then I just lay that down on my board. I want to make sure that this is nice and stuck down to my project. That way, once I squeegee with my white paste, it doesn't bleed. Then I squeegee on the paste and you want to squeegee it on with light to even pressure and then squeegee off the excess back into your paste jar and then you're gonna pull up your transfer and you always wanna pull it in one direction. So you don't wanna pull it from the corner. If you see how I just did that, I pulled the corner and then I pulled the other corner to pull it down evenly. Once I revealed that absolutely stunning image, then I'm just gonna dry it with my blow dryer. And I also got these handle pulls from Home Depot. They are only 98 cents a piece and they do screw from the top rather than most pulls. You have to um, screw them from the back. But with this particular project, I wanted to make sure that I had these particular pulls. It's just much easier to work with and you don't have to line them up and drill all the way through the wood. So it's up to you whatever pulls that you particularly particularly like but I thought that these were not only super cheap but absolutely gorgeous as well so I just make sure that my pulls are nice and even and then I'm going to use my drill to uh, screw them in and literally you guys that was it these are so easy to make I have had so many questions on how I made my last one and as you see here it was way too small for my new stove so I knew that I had to bring you guys a brand new noodle board or stove cover so let me know down in the comment section what you guys think of this project will you guys be making it you can totally make this out of Dollar Tree wood and products but it's just much cheaper to go to the hardware store and pick up your materials from there so again let me know down in the comments what you guys think don't forget to share this out if you enjoyed this video it really helps my channel to grow and helps YouTube to notice me a bit more and as always, if nobody has told you today, you are absolutely stunning. You are worthy. You are gorgeous. You literally can do anything you set your mind to. Coming from an addict who is nine years sober, I know that if I can do it, you can do it as well. With that being said, I'll catch y'all in the next one. Bye. Check out the videos that are popping up here to your left while you're waiting on my next upload or join the DIY fam here to your right.